guys i'm so glad you are here welcome back to my channel welcome back to all of my returning subscribers and hello to all of my new subscribers so guys as you know i'm going to be showing you guys how to make the best pot roast you've ever had in your life and the best pot roast that you're ever going to make so as usual guys you know that i'm going to run down everything that is needed i have a nice cut of chuck roast right here i got some red potatoes and regular russet potatoes I got some garlic cloves, I got some tomato paste, I got two onions, I got some thyme sprigs. Here I have some celery, I got some carrots, beef broth, red cooking wine, and here of course you know I got my seasoning blend here. Let me run that down to you. I got some beef bouillon. Let me show you which one that I use. This right here, this is some good stuff guys, so that's what I'm using. Okay, so the beef bouillon. I got some garlic powder, I got some salt, black pepper, onion powder, paprika, and flour. Now let me tell you why this flour is in my blend right now. Because normally when you sear meat before you roast it in the oven, you want to put a flour coating on it. But what I'm going to do is blend it inside of our seasoned blend because I don't want to have that thick coating of flour to where the meat is gonna end up looking like a country fried steak or a chicken fried steak. That's not the look that I'm going for. I just wanna have a perfect sear on there. So without further ado, guys, let's get into this video. First, I'm gonna show you how to prep these vegetables. Then I'm gonna show you how to season the meat. Then we're gonna get into everything else. Let's get to it. All right, so I went ahead and I took the skins off of the, uh, the onions to save us some time for this video. So these are the only vegetables that we're going to be using for the time being to start the meat off. The carrot and the celery are for later use, but I'll definitely be showing you guys how to cut that. So with this, this is going to be a simple, easy peasy, one, two, three. We're just going to cut it down the middle. And leave them just like that. And that's all. This is all we're going to do with the onions because I'm going to create a bed for when the chuck roast is ready to go in the oven. So here's our top and our garlic. All right, so let's get to seasoning the meat now. All right, guys, so next up, what you want to do is mix your seasoning blend. Make sure that everything is mixed all the way through. Okay, that looks good to me. Now, what we are going to do, now when you do this, you want to make sure that your meat is seasoned generously because this is a big cut of meat. As you can see, it's pretty thick. So you don't want a bland piece of meat on the inside. And the reason that I transferred it to this type of pan is because I want to make sure that I don't leave any of the seasoning out. I want to catch everything. All right. See, because when I lift it, some of it is going to fall. Now that's when you take it, take it and let it get on all on the sides. You see how it's coming up on the sides? That's exactly what you want. Now you're going to put that on there. You're going to generously season the other side. What the flour does is help assist with making a gravy. But later on in the video, we're going to be making a slur. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. For those of you who don't know, make sure you stay tuned in so that you will learn how to do that with the proper measurements. I just want to give that a press. Make sure that everything is seasoned. I'm going to add a little more to here, this side. All right, looks good to me, y'all. Okay, guys, so at this time, you want to make sure that your pot of choice to sear this in is preheating on a medium heat. All right, let's get to the stove. Now it's time to add a little vegetable oil to our pot. Now we're just going to take our 
chuck roast and lay it right on in that oil. Give it a press so that everything gets cooked evenly. Make sure that your oil is hot enough. If you don't hear that sear right away when you put it in, then it's not hot enough. Okay, so we're not going to move this around. I'm going to give this one more press. Guys, you can actually use a utensil to do this. You don't have to do what I'm doing. So we're going to let this sear on each side for five minutes a piece. Remember, guys, five minutes a piece until it develops a nice, perfect crust. And of course, guys, you already know that I'm going to show you what it looks like. And also, guys, make sure that you like this video and definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post a video. OK, so I'm going to let this go for five minutes and then I'll be right back when it's time to flip it over. All right, guys, so it's been five minutes. Let me show you what it's supposed to look like. This is perfect right here, okay? Now we're gonna do the next side for five minutes. That is the perfect crust. Listen to this. Perfect, perfect. Now the reason that we sear meat before putting it in the oven to bake the rest of the way is that when you sear it, it locks in the flavor. So that's all we're doing here. So I'm gonna let this go for five minutes, then I'm gonna take it out and let it rest on the plate. Okay, this is done. So we are going to take this out. It's a heavy piece of meat, guys. Okay, I'm going to let this rest on this plate here until we are ready to add it back to the pot. I see, guys, this here is okay to have. This is just fine. So when we add the red wine, it's going to deglaze. But these big chunks here, I am going to take out. We don't need that. Now to this, we're going to add our red wine. And we're just going to let this go for about, about 30 seconds just to help deglaze the bottom of this pan. And we're going to leave all of that in there because, guys, that is flavor and it will break up and it looked like it was never there. So we're going to let this go until you see it start bubbling up. And then we're going to add our tomato paste and our beef broth. Okay, it's bubbling just like I said it would. Okay, we have to cook some of that bitter flavor out of it so that when the dish is finished later, it won't have a bitter taste. Okay, so now we're going to add our beef broth. Now we're just going to give this a stir and let these liquids come together before we add in our paste, our tomato paste that is. Guys, like I mentioned earlier, don't worry about that fine down there because that's going to break up during the cooking process. And also I will be listing the full ingredient list along with the measurements in the description below. Okay, so let's add our tomato paste. All right, so you just wanna give it a little mash. I'm gonna get all the way through, make sure that it's fully incorporated and that there aren't any lumps of this tomato paste. Mm, this smells so good, guys. Uh, I can't wait to taste it later. Okay, so now I'm going to add the onions. And remember, guys, I said I was going to build a bed for this pot roast. So what I'm going to do is I'm placing them like this on this larger spatula that I have so that it doesn't splatter on me when it plops down. Okay, let me get the other two. Okay, so we got our onions in there. Now to this, we're going to add our garlic. Just place them around anywhere. Now let's place our meat right on top of those onions, as I explained earlier. All right, guys, so now what's going to happen is that we're going to add our thyme sprigs to this. I'm going to put a couple over there and then the rest over here. So this is already boiling, guys. So what we're going to do is leave it just like this. The onions are going to shrink down in size and break up and the meat will sink right on into this liquid. So now that it's boiling, I'm going to turn this off and we're going to place it in our oven at 325 degrees for two hours, guys, two whole hours, okay? So I'll be right back in two hours, guys. All right, guys, so it's approaching that time for us to take our pot roast out to add the remainder of our vegetables in. Remember, we gotta cut up the red potato, the russet potatoes, celery, and our carrots. And all of this was already previously washed before the video, so, I'm gonna show you guys one of each of how you should cut it, okay? Now, depending on your potato size, this one is like small. It's not that big. It's like 
small lead into medium. So I'm just going to have this one. I'm not going to quarter it. Okay. I'm just going to leave it half. And we're going to set that aside. And for the potato, the rest of the potato, I'm going to cut these into chunks. Just like that. And because of their size, like this one right here, this middle part, I'm going to cut it down. You can cut yours any way that you want. See, this is a this is fairly a good size. You can cut yours any way that you want. You know, this is just what I'm going to do because of the sizes that I have. Okay? And these in pieces can stay just as is. Okay, so now the celery Gonna cut off the end of the white. We don't need that. That gets discarded. And you're gonna cut off the tip. Now you're gonna cut these into at least like one inch pieces. Okay. Let me give you a close up. The sizes should look just like this, okay? All right. You're gonna add that to the bowl. Now we're gonna move on to our carrots. I'm just going to cut the tip off. Now I'm going to move this mess so that you can have a clear picture of what it is that I need to show you of how to cut it. So we're going to cut them the same size as our celery. So about an inch. We cut it to about an inch to an inch and a half. Okay, give you a close up, you know, I always got you. Okay, now remember, you're doing a roast, so your vegetables are supposed to be a bit chunky because when you put this back inside of the pot to roast for another hour, you don't want them to be cut too thin because they'll just turn the mush and then mix in with the gravy, and you don't want that, you want it to hold its shape. Okay. So there you have it, guys. That's how you prepare each of these vegetables. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, and I'll be back because it'll be time to add these wonderful vegetables to our pot roast. All right, y'all. It's about that time. Let's do the reveal. It's been two hours. Oh, we That is a beauty. You see what I meant about the onions? They got soft and ran away from being the bed <laughs> of this pot roast. All right, y'all, so what we're going to do now is that we are going to add the remainder of our vegetables. Then we are going to place this back in the oven for exactly one hour. Okay, so I'm going to do all that now. It doesn't matter which order you place everything in, but you want to be sure to kind of spread things out evenly. All right, y'all, it's about that time. Just took it out of the oven. Woo! Look at that beauty. Yes. Okay, so now we just want to make sure everything is tender the way it's supposed to be. Look how that meat is breaking up. This is exactly what you want. You see that? Doesn't that look amazing? It smells amazing. I can't wait to taste it. Okay, so I'm going to check our potatoes now. Went right through. That's done. Of course, the carrots are. That's done. All right, guys, so here's the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to take the potatoes, carrots, and celery and put them into a separate bowl. And I'm going to take the meat and put it onto a, a plate just to let it rest until I'm finished making this gravy. So the liquid that was left, we're going to make a gravy with that, just as I explained. So we're going to bring that to a light simmer, as you saw before I started stirring it. See the bubbles moving there? That's what you want, okay? Now we're going to add our slur. Just gradually mix that in. Now you want to keep stirring this until it becomes silky smooth, which isn't going to take long. See, it's starting to form together. See that? You want this gravy to be light, not too thick. So you just want to keep stirring it around until you see the change in consistency. See that? 
that's how I know it's almost done. When I'm able to drag that back and you see the bottom of the pan, that's how I know that this gravy is almost ready. Okay, it's been about a little over a minute. And you see how the consistency changed. You want this gravy to be a little loose. You don't want it to be a thick gravy. You want it to be pourable, okay? Because this is a loose gravy for this dish. See that? You want it to be pourable just like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. And now we're going to put everything together, guys. All right, guys, so our roast is completely done. All right, guys, so our roast is completely done. I've returned it back to the pan. I hope you like the way it looks. And now we're just going to kind of pull it apart, okay? And it makes you come apart just like that. I'm not going to pull it apart a whole lot. Just a, whoa, just a little bit. Okay, so we could get some of that gravy up in there. I'm not shredding it. I'm going to leave it in some form of chunks. Guys, this smells so good. I wish you were here. Okay, so this is good enough. Now we're going to add some of that good old gravy that we just made. Okay, so here goes. Oh, man, guys, doesn't that look good? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> you can't deny this meal right now. It was super easy. Only thing that took long was the cooking time as far as it in the oven, but you still didn't have much to do. So I'm going to get a little on these vegetables. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now we're going to hit it with a little bit of parsley. Not much, just a little bit for a little bit of pop. You guys know I like to call this food glitter. Doesn't this look good, guys? Now we're going to taste it to see what a fabulous job we've done. All right, guys, let's give this a taste. I'm just going to taste one of everything. I'm not going to overcrowd the plate. I just want to let you guys know how wonderful this tastes. Look how that meat just picks right on up. Look at that, guys. Oh, my God. I wish you guys were here. And you can see how fork tender the potatoes are. Came right or loose. But the star of the show is the meat. Let's try that. Mmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Guys, let me let you try this. Where are my manners? Here you go. All right. Mm. The carrot is tender. Let's try that. Oh my God. It's perfectly cooked. Let's try the potato. Mm. It just melted right in my mouth. <laughs> I am definitely satisfied with this recipe. Guys, I hope that you are satisfied with this recipe just as much as I am. And also, guys, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notification bell so that you know when I post another video. Thank you guys for watching. I definitely appreciate you all. That being said, we're out of here, guys.